Welcome back to another episode of Varsity Views Inside the Huddle Edition, brought to you by Keon Sports. I'm Jax Gregory. And I'm Darian Jackson. And this week, we had some close games, some defensive battles, and also some back-and-forth offensive showings. So let's get into it. Coming in at game number five for us, we have Solon versus Strongsville. Now, this was actually a very low-scoring game with Solon winning 10-0. to They played a lot of good defense, unfortunately, Strongsville couldn't get on the board. No. Like, they didn't let them get on the board at all. And I personally have seen Strongsville play before. I've seen them go down 21-7 to and then turn the Jets on another team and go <laughs> up 35-21. to you know, 24, 21. Yeah, And they was so, able to yeah. end up winning the game. So I know that that team is, like, really talented. And just for them to be shut out, like, all four quarters not even making it is, like, really crazy to me. Yeah, it just shows you how good the Solon defense is. I mean, they're ranked, I think, top 50-ish. 80-ish in the state, so they kind of proved it here, just shutting down Strongsville's high-powered offense and everything, and then they Solon scored only 10 points, won the game, but all 10 points, I think, came in the first quarter, so first quarter was just that was the offense. Yeah, literally guess. like the first half, like if you're Solon, you're just already up. The goal already is like, alright, let's just play the best defense we possibly can we go home winners. <laughs> like once you score the first touchdown... Whichever team you are, you're just like, all right, we just got to play defense. We play defense for the rest of the game, we're good. Yep. And the second half saw no points scored by either team. Nothing. Yeah. But neither team, both defenses were showing out. I mean, it was just ugly the <laughs> second half. I would give them the benefit of the doubt with Strongsville being a little bit younger as far as, like, the class-wise. Mm-hmm. Like, their starting quarterback is only a sophomore. Yeah, so, so it's starting like, quarterback is a senior, and their running back, and their best receiver is also a senior. So, so like, you know, they're a little bit more seasoned and played all these yeah. years together, so they're ready. So, with them only having, like, you know, their players that are coming up in their class are all sophomores and juniors right now. So, I mean, good one for Solon, because, I mean, if, if y'all would have lost that one, <laughs> for real, being one of the highest-ranked teams, yeah. top teams, I should one say. One of the higher-ranked teams. Yeah, yeah, for sure, so... Hey, so long, good work, man. 10 0. Y'all got the shutout, man. We don't yeah. see too many of those. Exactly. And if you would like to uh, read up more about this, you can go to keonsports.com and look for the article written by Lindsey Reitz. Coming in at number four in our top five games countdown is North Olmstead versus Buckeye. Buckeye, if you remember last week, we st- talked about them in the preview game because they've been putting up all these points. So we wanted to see what was going on. And first half, it wasn't look good. First quarter, it was 0-0. Nothing really was going on. But then the second quarter, North Olmstead managed to put up 13 points and take a 13-0 lead in the halftime. Coming out of halftime, it really wouldn't change as North Olmstead would punch it in one more time and it would be up 20 to nothing in the early in the third quarter. With North Olmstead being up 20-0 to in the beginning of the third quarter, they ended up getting a little too casual, a little too comfortable because Buckeye would then respond on a 14 to nothing spurt, making it a game now because the score is now 20 to 14. So they got a little too casual and too comfortable, and Buckeye was able to take advantage of that. But North Olmstead would respond. They would score another touchdown before the third quarter would end to take the lead 26 to 14 going into the fourth. But in the fourth, the Bucks responded once again. They scored another touchdown and closed the gap to 26 to 21 in the fourth quarter. At this point, it's looking like a teeter totter game. Yeah, I mean, they were just. Going back and forth, back and forth. Buckeyes got momentum. North Olmstead's kind of on the edge. They don't know what to expect, but even though they just scored. So anything could happen, honestly. I mean, I mean that's just what happens. Your team gets comfortable. You're up 20-0. to zero, Boom, you get smacked in the face. So they're making it a game now. They gave them an opportunity that they shouldn't have given them to begin with. Yeah, I mean, the Bucks should have been out of this game, but they never gave up. In the end, though, North Olmstead would end up running away with it. They'd score a couple more times, go up 40 to 28, and they would run out of here with a W. North Olmstead got some huge help in this one from their defensive lineman, Gavin Beasley, who recorded eight sacks and 15 tackles. Eight sacks in a single game is out of this world. Like, you, that's... I, I'm speechless. That, that's crazy. Talk about headhunting. Because <laughs> that man just... He, that man just... He was going for people's necks. Yeah. And Buckeye, they got some help from running back Troy McCann. He had 68 yards rushing and two touchdowns, but it just wasn't enough to beat this North Olmstead team. If you want to find more on this game, you can visit Keon Sports' website and look for the author William Schneider, who wrote a great article on this game. Coming in at game number three, we have St. Ed's versus Elder. Now... 
this is really one of the bigger games of the week because Elder was ranked through number three coming in. And Ed's is obviously a top three team. I think they might have been number two or four, something like that coming in because they're either one up or one under uh, Elder. And this game was tough. This game was definitely going to go down to the wire. I didn't know who was personally going to win it myself. I'm an Ed's fan. So, I'm going to be honest, I didn't even know who Elder was. So, like, <laughs> I'm a, I was an Ed's fan, so I'm hoping, like, oh, yeah, St. Ed's definitely got to pull this out. But they start off the, the game a little rocky. They yeah. threw two interceptions. Yeah, two interceptions in their first two drives. The first one led to an Elder touchdown. So, Ed's was looking a little rough to start off this game. Yeah, it happens. You know, a little knock off the rust. I mean, both teams are coming into the game undefeated 3-0. and Yeah. So, someone's going to lose. Thank God it wasn't Ed's <laughs> They but, put them in the bag. But yeah, Elder would go up seven nothing at the end of the first quarter, and then to end the half, it was seven to three Elder. So not that big of a scoring first half. Good defenses, which is expected by these two very talented teams. Yeah, they're top top five easily. Yeah. So like they're really powerhouse teams. But coming, you know, to the end towards the end of the third, like Ed's was able to get a touchdown. They yeah. went up ten to seven. Ten seven. Yep. End of the third quarter, Ed's took the lead, looking good. And then going into the fourth quarter, Ed would score another touchdown. But Elder would also score a touchdown. This would make it 17-14. And, you know, maybe something could happen for Elder to get, get a win. But Ed's was just turned out to be too much in this game. And they would win 17-14. to Hey, man, defense wins games. Yeah. And offense, like they said, what was it? Defense wins games and offense, like, sells tickets. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I, I know defense movie. wins championships. Yeah, maybe that's really what it was because they, they got a chip last year. So, yeah. I mean, this team is already seasoned. They know, like, their program is really nice. So, you understand, like, playing a top team, especially being a championship team, like, playing top teams all around is, is nothing new. So, yeah, playing a team like Elder, who's number three, and, mm-hmm. you know, you guys are all undefeated. Like, someone was bound to lose, but, you know, only the strong survive and – St. Ed's is able to get their win and stay undefeated. Yep, and the player of the game was uh, St. Ed's running back Marvin Bell, who had a nice day out there. If you guys are interested in reading more about this game, make sure you guys go on KeonSports.com and look up the author, Sydney Hampton. She wrote a really nice article. It was very detailed and really great, so make sure you all go check her uh, article out. And coming in at number two on our countdown is Kenston versus East Lake North. Kenston went ahead early in this game 7 nothing. you know, Offense did their thing. Defense stood strong in the first quarter. And then the second quarter came around, and there was more scoring by both teams. Kenston would end up scoring another touchdown and a field goal to have 17. And Eastlake North would score two touchdowns to end the half down 17-14. to Eastlake would come out of the half scoring their third touchdown of the night, going up 21-17 to on Kenston. But... Kenston would also come back with their own touchdown again, taking the lead back 24-21. to Going into this third quarter, both teams are really going at it blow for blow. They're, they're, the amount of lead changes that they're having right now is like starting to get interesting. We, <laughs> we love to see a back and forth game. Yeah, Nobody back, likes to see one side of the game. These are the best type of games when they're going back and forth. Both teams are clicking. so It, it, it was probably a joy to watch, honestly. But in the fourth quarter, Kenston would take over. Kenston would end up scoring on an 80-yard touchdown pass to take the lead 31 to 21. Eastlake would end up scoring one more time to make it 31-28, but that would end up being the final score to this one. Kenston 31, Eastlake 28. Kenston running back Sean Patrick wins player of the game as he had 19 carries for 165 yards and a touchdown. He also had five catches for 118 yards and a touchdown. And then on defense, he also got an interception. Talk about padding your stats. I mean, he was all over the place today on this field. I mean, it was it was crazy. He was doing everything. He played offense and defense. I mean, you're expected to have a great game. Yeah, Dan Stoddard, you better watch out because your streak might be over from this guy. If you'd like to figure out more about this game, you can visit KeonSports.com and look up the author Tony Bogan. Coming in at game number one, we have Berea Mid Park versus Elyria. This is by far the best game of the week. It is number one, and this ended up being a close game from start to finish as Berea Mid Park would outdo Elyria 34 to 32 this game. I mean, you could call it a nail biter if you want to. They were literally going blow for blow. Not said blow for blow. <laughs> blow for blow. The entire game. Yeah, it was a, a barn burner, as we, we'd we call it. Uh, Berea Mid Park and Elyria, this was just back and forth the whole way. I mean, first quarter, 
Mid Park had the lead 14 to 12. A pretty good scoring quarter. Both teams got two touchdowns. Illyria just kept going for two and they couldn't get it. Now in the second quarter, we saw a lot of scoring. Berea Mid Park would score two touchdowns and Illyria would again score another touchdown, but they could not make get a two point conversion. They kept going for two and just wouldn't get it couldn't get it in. I mean at some point in the game you really want to play safe and just go for field goal. I feel like going for two is only I feel like you should really do it unless you're either trying to, like, blow the lead that you already have up a little bit more. Yeah. Like, Alaria is down. Like, I get the two-point conversion. It'll put you in a better position. But the field goal sometimes is always the safest way to yeah. go. And Alaria ended up losing by two. So, if you kick some of those field goals, it's a tie game. Like Matter of fact. It goes to OT. They could have won, even. To be Maybe. honest, no. They definitely could have won the game. Like, I was already hearing about it so much from the author that <laughs> wrote this, which is our friend. He was... Absolutely furious because he's like, bro, Illyria had this in the game. They just could not get the two-point conversions. Like, you think about it, like you said, they only needed to kick two field goals, and it's a tie game. This game could have went in OT yeah. had they had converted because I think every touchdown they went for two. Yeah, it, that's what it seems like. And But Berea would go in the half with a 28-18 to 18 lead, pretty comfortable 10-point lead. And then second half, more scoring. I mean, Berea would only, only end up scoring a, one more touchdown – and Illyria, they would claw, claw back into this game, honestly. I just know that they're just really upset that the fact that you lose by two and then you keep going for twos. <laughs> like, if you, it's like, in retrospect, like, two field goals, tie game, or whatever. Anything two like extra that. points. Yeah, two extra points, whatever. <laughs> like, but you going for two, like, we just had to convert one of those plays. Mm-hmm. We went 0 for how many ever time they yeah. tried. Like, they didn't convert one. Like, yeah. only needed one in the long run. And games like those is like, we had that in the bag. And truthfully, like, Berea survived. Yeah. That's a game where you just say that you survived because hey, they could convert. Credit to them for stopping the two-point conversions because that Man, saved them. Good defense by yeah. Berea, for real. Like we said in the beginning, Berea Mid Park ended up surviving Illyria 34-32 to as their QB, a.k.a. the leader of that squad, for real. Because that's what the quarterbacks do. They make the plays and they make it all happen. Troy Schick went for 14 of 20 with 161 passing yards for three touchdowns. He even had one rushing touchdown of his own. He was pointing the points up on the board for real. Talking about the assist man. <laughs> yeah. So, But Alaria had some really good uh, offensive guys as well, especially Lance Glover. He went for uh, 29 rushes with 154 yards with three touchdowns himself. So, I mean, one man can't do it all. He was really making it happen out there. They just... Man, I know they looking back like they just needed that one two-point conversion or just would have went for them field goals, man. This game could have easily went a different way. Mm-hmm. This is what makes it like a nail-biter because it's like it's like a game that leaves you in suspense. Like anything could happen, but you don't know what's going to happen. But had they had did it, like who knows what the end mm-hmm. score would have been. So if you guys want to look into this and read about it some more, make sure you guys continue to keep going like we've been saying all show long. Go to KeonSports.com. Look for the guy, Jalen Keith. That's the Brody. He wrote a really good article. That's an Illyria man, too. So, you know, he got some. He has some things to say about Illyria. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all go check that out. All right, that wraps up top five games of the week. And heading into our next segment, we got player of the week. And I know what you're thinking. It's going to be Dan Stoddard again. Uh, uh, Medina quarterback. He was in consideration. He had himself a day, 28 for 41, 386 yards, five touchdowns. He also rushed for 33 yards and scored a touchdown. Yeah, he had a great game. But Kenston running back Sean Patrick had 19 carries, 165 yards, a touchdown, five catches for 118 yards and a touchdown, and also an interception on defense. I mean, he did it all on both sides of the ball. So Kenston running back Sean Patrick, you're the player of the week. Congratulations, my guy. You was killing it out there. I'm sorry, Dan. Y'all should have just already knew. We didn't even have a Medina game. <laughs> so it was like he definitely wasn't going to be on there. But, I mean, hey. He's, he's still, he's still, still balling there. out. He's still balling. So, hey, you, you might be there next week. We'll see. And then our final segment of the show today is our preview to week five. First game we're going to preview is a backyard rivalry. The rivalry I was a part of. These two schools hate each other. It's 1-3 and three, Twinsburg going into Nordonia, who's 4-0 and ranked 36th in Ohio. I hate to say it. I don't think Twinsburg's going to 
They need a big game out of Quincy Newsom. We talked the first week. They need a big game out of him. But Nordonia has so much offensive firepower and a great defense. It's going to be tough. I ain't going to lie. You really hyped that up in the beginning. And I just looked down and saw the record. And I was like, dang, 4-0 <laughs> to 1-3. I don't I mean, it's your school. So, I mean, if you're feeling it. <laughs> no, these two schools, they hate each other. I was, it, long, It's a long story, but they do not like each other. Are there any fist fights? <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Yeah, they didn't. That's not enough hate for me. No, I'm not gonna put. Any, I'm not gonna put anybody on blast or anything. But. Trust me, you're graduating. I'm sure them people are gone. <laughs> like, if the beef is there, we need to see some fists thrown. I don't even care. I need somebody to get blindsided. Or something. I want to see some fire. Cause yeah, I'm, if they that big of a rival, even if they lose, like even like what you say about mm-hmm. Nordonia is really nice and everything. But even yeah. if Twinsburg, thirty six like, in Ohio, and Twinsburg is like, I looked it up today, like. 300th nope, or something. Nope, see, you don't even need to put it out there. They won in three. So, <laughs> nah, but if it should be a close game, though. If it's As long as it's a close game and not no one-sided blowout or something yeah. like that, then that's cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I'm covering that game. So, oh, hoping to see it. Yeah, hoping to see a good one. Now, our next game, we got... Strongsville versus Medina. Dang, we just says Dan Stoddard stats, but <laughs> they're going to Medina game. Yeah, Medina, 3-1. They're ranked 37th in Ohio, just behind Nordonia. And Strongsville, they're going to have a rough game coming off that sc- scoreless outing against Solon. I mean, Solon's offense is good, but it's nowhere near this Medina offense. Medina's defense is good, too. So, you think Hope- it? I'm still thinking it's going to be a good game because Strongsville, they have a great defense as well. But like I said, they're just a little bit younger in their yeah. their graduation class right now, relying on a lot of sophomores and juniors right now. So, I mean, if Medina do it, actually, I ain't even gonna fake. I see some ridiculous scoreboard <laughs> number, but I ain't gonna make no predictions about it yet. Though we just we just might have to just look out for the game. That's all. <laughs> yeah, and then another game to look forward to. Now this game this game's gonna be crazy. We got. Number two in Ohio, St. Ed's, 4-0, and going up against 3-1, and number 10 in Ohio, Maslin, Washington. This is a powerhouse, powerhouse game. I mean, two top 10 ranked teams going head-to-head, something to look out for. You always love watching uh, top 10, top 5 teams go at it. Like, any ranked team that's, like, really up there, and this is football, so, you know, we like to go on a scale of, like, top 25. Yeah. Like, you're going to... You're going to want to see this game. You're going to want to get your seats, your tickets, and everything. So, hey, man, like I said, I, we we rock with Ed's this way. So, <laughs> you know, and they won a chip last year. So, we're going to see how they rock out. Now, next game, this might be even a better game. I mean, number six in Ohio, St. Ignatius, 3-0, going up against number three in Ohio now, Hoban, who's 4-0. We got a top six matchup here. I think that... See, when you put a number two team, though, versus a number 10 team, but then you have a six versus a three, it just seemed like the numbers seem like they're all <laughs> single digits on this side. So that team might be a little bit different. But both the teams are undefeated, though. Mm-hmm. So, again, someone's about to lose. Yep. Someone finna be embarrassed. That perfect season's going to go out the door. Yeah, but It's sad because both these teams are excellent. I mean. Yeah. And then our last game to look out for is 3-1 and one Valley Forge going up against 3-1 and one Buckeye. See if Buckeye can respond after their first loss last week. And I'm looking forward to see how their offense responds. See if they get back into that winning column. Yeah, scoring 60-something points a game like they were before. Hey, sometimes it's easier to do that on a team that, you know, you're expecting to be. But this is a team that's, you know, I don't think they're going to go for 60, 50 no. points. So we'll probably see some scoring in the 20s. Yeah. I can give us, like, you know, three, four touchdowns apiece. Mm-hmm. So I think that's how we're going to rock out with it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right, you guys, that seems to be the end of the show. That was our top five teams of the week, the preview and player of the game. If you guys have not been caught up yet, make sure you guys go on Keon Sports on YouTube. Make sure you guys catch all the previous episodes that we have posted before. Uh, this is preview for week five, so you guys are going to catch us next week, next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's going to be teed. I'm looking forward to these games. We got two, maybe three teams in the top ten, so... We got a couple, actually. Four teams Four in the teams top in the- ten. So this should be a very interesting and hype week five of football. Yeah, I'm very excited. But that's all the time we have today for Varsity Views Inside the Huddle Edition, brought to you by Keon Sports. We'll see you guys next week. I'm Jax. And I'm Darian. Peace. Peace.